Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Um, I had a story that I wanted to talk about in regards to this terrible holiday party that my job put on. But you know what? I'm not going to go there because I don't want to just uh, complain all the time. Life isn't about making complaints on a consistent basis. There's other things that happen in life. So um, today I will be talking to you guys about um, sleeping with strangers. Now... The title does sound a little suggestive, but it's not going to be like uh, one night stands. This will be talking about um, other instances where I've slept with people that I didn't know. And when I mean slept with, like shared a bed, shared a room, um, just shared a space, an intimate space um, with someone that I did not know. So, I used to do this all the time as a child. You know, there'd be church functions that you'd go to. You have to share the room with people that you only saw on Sundays, maybe once or twice during a week. But this particular incident, or this particular case, it happened as an adult. So, and I actually willingly did it this time. I guess because I was so used to it before. But um, there is sort of like a preface to this story, or kind of like a mini story in this story. Uh that will give a little bit of background. I'm in a sorority and there was a Greek picnic happening for everyone that is part of the Divine Nine. If you guys don't know what it is, uh, look it up. Uh, I might talk about it later. Don't necessarily want to talk too much about Greek life, but this particular story, um, I will. And it'll make sense a little bit later. So there was a Greek picnic that was going on. I wanted to attend, but I had work on this particular day. I couldn't call out. Uh, I hate calling out of work. I don't know why. The jobs don't care about you, but just got to get that money, I guess. So anyway, I didn't get to call off of work and I really wanted to go. And the only way I'd be able to make it, um, you know, that kind of work with my pockets because uh, my bank account definitely said otherwise. But um, the only way for me to go was to ride down with somebody. And the person I was going to ride down with, my sorority sister, Alicia, she had already gone. So she connected me with somebody who was part of our sorority who would be driving down and I never talked to or met this girl outside of being given her number and asking her if she was driving down and asking her if I can ride with her. So she said yes. I met her at her house. Two other girls pulled up. We consolidated into a car and headed down to LA for this Greek picnic. Now, shout out to Rachel. Uh, she has become... You know, like family to me. And the funny thing about that is um, I posted pictures of us together at this Greek picnic. And come to find out, my uncle actually works for her mother or worked for her mother. So it was really interesting to see kind of the six degrees of separation. But anyway, so we're at this Greek picnic and I'm staying in a room with a bunch of girls that I do not know. I end up sharing a couch with some just random chick. And we ended up becoming really cool. The group of girls that I met in LA during the time of that Greek picnic have become like people that are very close to me. I consider them family. I tell them all kinds of stuff. Like we have a group chat. We have a few different group chats. Uh, we um, try as hard as we can to see each other when we're all in the same area. All of them are part of the sorority that I am part of. So we have a bond not only because of the organization that we belong to, but also just based on um, the bond that we've created ourselves and getting to know each other and spending time together. So that story out of the way, same ladies that I met when I was in LA, we hung out together during that time and we met up with, uh, some alphas and, uh, the alphas were really nice. We kind of linked up before the Greek picnic to like practice strolling making sure we're all on one accord and whatnot and just getting ready to go into the picnic because you know you don't want to go alone I guess traveling in groups it kind of looks nice like we kind of felt special you know we just got to LA met up with some people and we're not walking into the, the picnic as individuals but as a group I kind of felt cool I don't know about anybody else I can only speak for myself but I felt cool especially you know having connected like it's all about networking and so we were able to network with some people in that small amount of time and go to the picnic with them and have a good time. So after that picnic, we all went back home, formed a group chat, and we stayed connected. There was another Greek picnic that was happening, and um, we decided to all get together 
and stay in an Airbnb together so that we can bond and travel to the next Greek picnic as a unit. So this particular Greek picnic was in the Bay Area. So they all came up. It was really interesting because some of these people were ones that we just met like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm from such and such. And you know, that's it. We didn't know much about each other outside of just meeting them or the few girls that I did get to spend time with uh, during our weekend. Those two days spent, you know, just learning them from there. It's not much that you can learn about somebody in two days. You know, you can ask all the questions in the world. You can spend time together, but you still don't really know them. So we decided that during this Bay Area Greek picnic that we would just get an Airbnb and hang out, have a good time, go to the picnic together and just create memories. We got this Airbnb and it's filled with, I want to say there was like maybe 10 people, 10 people in an Airbnb that I did not really know. Some people think of it as crazy. Like, yeah, these people are coming. First of all, I didn't even need to be in the Airbnb. I lived in the area, or at least not too far. But I was like, it's time. You know, I'm I'm all about taking risks. I'm all about trying new things. And so I was like, you know what? You don't know who these people may be. They may be lifetime friends. They may be just fair weather friends. They may not even be friends after this. You may experience them and feel like, all right, I'm cool. Don't need to, to know you outside of this. <laughs> talk to you outside of this, whatever. It was really interesting to me putting myself in that position because I like meeting people. I like talking. I like getting to know people. My my love language is spending quality time. And so after having spent that time with those people in LA, I felt like, you know, they're willing to hang out again. Could be cool. So um, Airbnb, we pre-gamed for um, the Greek picnic. We went out to Era, that's a club in Oakland together. You know, we had breakfast together. We had a dinner together and it was really cool. And after that time, we became like family. There were like 10 of us and we did not know much about each other except for name, probably didn't even know age. Probably barely even knew names. We were on a first name basis strictly. What organization they belonged to and uh, the area that they lived in. Some of them we, it took us a minute to to even remember that, but now here we are. Man, that was what, 2017? So two years later, we still link up and hang out. We have get-togethers where we just come together and play games and have a good time. And it's like, I live so far, so I do travel. I traveled to California to spend time with these people because I enjoy their company a lot. I feel like it's not much. A lot of them that live in LA, they're like, traffic, I might have to catch you on the next one. And I feel like, dang, I know everybody's not like me, but I'm like, if I can travel from the Pacific Northwest back to California, Southern California at that in most cases, to hang out, you can sit in traffic for a little while to hang out. Because when they do hang out, they have so much fun. So I'm like, okay, what's the problem? It's just traffic. Traffic is a deterrent, but I kind of got on their case about it. And now I feel like I'm the troll of the group. because I will call you out and I will try to make you feel bad so that you come and participate because it's fun. Like we're fun people. I know I'm fun or at least I try to be fun. But yeah, so we've had um, one, two, three, four get togethers. And we're working on another one. And I mean like, I don't know, the bond that we have, it just is really special to me. And I appreciate those people. And it all started from sleeping with somebody that I didn't know, which is crazy. Like the reason why I got into the car with this girl was because based on our organization and our values and our mission, I was like, we are like-minded individuals. So I know um, hopefully nothing will happen to me. If something does happen to me, you know, I guess I had a good run. I'll be a young Ivy be on the wall, I guess. But that didn't happen. I'm still here. I'm telling you the story now. You got to take risks sometimes to meet some awesome individuals. Like I've done a lot of stuff that I never would have considered doing based on um, sometimes perception, sometimes things that have been echoed to me from, you know, the people that raised me, that's immediate family and extended family, um, just elders, you know, people... Everyone's a critic. Everyone has an opinion. And some things that you do, they might not do. So I had heard sometimes a little backlash about some choices and decisions that I make. But I feel like taking a risk in that capacity and going to hang out with people that, you know, I didn't really know too much about but wanted to get to know turned out to work very well in my favor because 
I solicit advice from this group of people all the time, tell them about my crazy stories, like the dating story, the guy with the record, the lengthy rap sheet. Oh yeah, they knew. Like the moment that I searched and found all that stuff out, I was like, y'all, listen, check this out. This guy, blah, 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 like told them the whole story in the group chat and they laughed, of course, but it kind of gave me some relief and some people reached out to me saying, you know, it's unfortunate that that happened to you, blah, blah, blah. But I trust them enough to tell them real personal, intimate things about me. And we kind of did that in a short period of time, which is crazy. So it's like our chemistry just worked out like that. And it, it blows my mind that that kind of stuff can happen because I never thought that that kind of stuff could happen. So my first time as an adult, is it my first time? My first time as an adult choosing to sleep with strangers has been a great benefit to me in my life and wouldn't change it for the world.